r slash today I fricked up. Fingus says. Today I fricked up be giving a girl, 30, f. My 20 male, phoned so that she could put in her number and almost getting scammed out of $300. My god, where do I even begin, I feel like such a dumbass right now. 4 days ago, my girlfriend of 10 months broke up with me very out of the blue with a very vague reason, and said it wasn't my fault. I've been trying to cope with it, but honestly, these past few days have been extremely chaotic, mostly out of circumstance. Weeks ago, my mom and I had planned a trip to New Orleans. She really wanted to take me, since I've never been, and we rarely go on vacations. I've been having a great time so far, but the fact that I'm 20 and not 21 is definitely a downside. I couldn't get into any active bars, and I'm not exactly what you would call a great flirt, especially when I'm sober. I didn't end up approaching any girls, even when I managed to get cat called by to my age. On the way back from the hotel, a girl and I started talking to each other. She was very attractive and charming, and after a few minutes started flirting very heavily. She started grabbing my junk putting my hands on her ass, asking me if I wanted to go back to her hotel in order to frick, and I almost said yes, but I still have a lot of apprehension from the fact I've only been single for less than a week. Eventually, she just asked to put her number in my phone. I gave it to her reluctantly, kind of, just so that I could go back to the hotel after a long day, I had been almost 24 hours without sleep at this point. She took a really long time to put her number in, and every time I'd try to take my phone back, she'd hold it harder and tease me for being nervous, which I really was. I kind of just let it happen, because I figured this was my chance to make up for my lack of confidence earlier. I get back to the hotel, and I get a text from my bank letting me know about a suspicious purchase. This girl tried to send herself $300 through my Venmo to herself. Luckily, it didn't go through, but you want to know why it didn't go through? My card got declined. Now, I'm stuck in New Orleans with both my cards locked. I can't call the bank until tomorrow. My mom is here so I'm not totally, frick, ed, but I still feel like such a dumbass for falling for that. Too long, didn't read, a girl started flirting with me, and I gave her my phone, so she could put her number in and she tried to pay herself $300 and now my bank account is basically. Lord Rupert Everton says. New Orleanian here. Be glad you didn't go back to her room. Usually that ends up with you being drugged and having your wallet slash phone slash watch slash etc. Missing when you wake up. Patricio underscore guapo says. And missing a kidney. Yo underscore yo underscore Vietnamese says. Yeah we took a trip to New Orleans and my husband got scammed out of money from a person who wanted to do some trick, where they guessed something about you. They didn't back off, until I said I was going to call the cops, if they didn't get out of my face. We also had another person beg, to take our picture with my husband's new iPhone, while conveniently staying on their bike. They followed us for blocks begging, until I went off, that they were obvious, and needed to leave. It's clear that a lot of people target tourists, because they're usually drunk. Thankfully I was fairly sober, but my husband was drunk, and also was very trusting, and never considered someone would target him. Of all the places we've been to that was the place people tried to scam us the most. I guess it makes sense though, if most people are drinking all day. New Pink Bunna Slippers says. How does this Venmo app not require any sort of login or active confirmation? No face scan, thumbprint, a pin code or a password at all? The F is this shit. Arluff 96 meters says. It does if you have it set up. Smocked Eggs says. Yes, you need to set it up. Consumers need to learn how to protect themselves. Doink the hump didn't says. FYI, everyone in New Orleans is trying to scam you. The Lord Stock underscore GG says. As someone from Kenna, I agree. Bellary Afstaba says. 
just send me a text, I don't let people I just met use my phone as a matter of principle. No offense, it's just a personal rule of mine. Dead underscore procrastinator says. You didn't go to a hotel with her, because you broke up recently. Not because you would obviously be drugged and robbed of your kidneys. She saw you coming from a mile away. Plutocratia rules says. Why is everyone talking about kidneys? Is this a legit thing and know which happens? Dead underscore procrastinator says. It's hyperbolic, op would be robbed or scammed, or possibly hurt even worse. It's like saying he'll turn you into a lampshade, when you want to say someone is creepy. DBG925 says. Look at it this way, today you won you woke up with both your kidneys still inside your body. 230 says. Lol this girl was obviously a hooker. Can't underscore think underscore of underscore one underscore says. Sounds like a scam artist, rather than a hooker. Hookers I can respect. R slash today I fricked up. Dekahaya number says. Today I fricked up be accidentally stopping my sri med for anxiety. So the last 3 weeks I have just felt ready to rage at anything. I have had a hard time not snapping at my ATO daughter, every day she's telling me that I've been a grouch. I've had vivid anxiety dreams night after night and I've suffered from intrusive thoughts about how my boss is probably out to get me, no rational evidence of this I roll, and what he'll tell him to set him straight when he puts his plan into action. With my wife, any modicum of criticism from her sets me off, and I have felt convinced that she thinks I'm a bum and I've felt so sad because I've thought that I'll never be able to win her approval. I've had to hold back tears at work twice in the last 2.5 days, just because of like normal work things I've tried desperately to summon my chill, setting intentions to breathe and not be reactive and to not speak in anger, but it's been like the gods of chill have forsaken me. My wife's been at her breaking point with my crazy ass as we've fought almost every day. Well today as I'm taking my nightly meds, I have more than a couple, I look through the vials and notice that the Selixir is not among them. Apparently it failed to get the new month's vial out when the old one ran out 3 weeks ago. Not good. Particularly because you're never supposed to quit into depressants cold turkey, they need to be tapered off. So I looked up the symptoms for antidepressant discontinuation syndrome and a snippet reads like this, hyperarousal, anxiety, irritability, agitation, and aggression well I guess I've been the freaking poster child too long, didn't read, I turned myself into a crazier than normal aggressive dickhead for 3 weeks by accidentally going cold turkey off of Selexa. Jseni93 says. My wife had full blown hallucinations when she did this once. It was not pretty. She swore there were workers cutting down a tree outside her apartment. Blazek90 says. Did you get the brain zaps? That's my first withdrawal symptom, physically at least. Admiral Beconstraps says. Never stop and re suddenly without medical supervision. You've just learned how bad the withdrawal profile can be. Flighty57 says. I weaned off Lixapro with the doctor's guidance. Worked from 20mg down to 5mg over a few months. Still got the zaps. Started to have depression and anger issues. Suicidal ideation. I'm back on 20mg now, and feeling balanced and relatively happy. I guess I'm just not meant to have a sex life. Mentored70 says. I found an article that said when patients withdraw or miss their Vinlaf vaccine, if exa, and SRI, they should be counseled not to drive because it messes up their coordination too much. Original Dawn says. I went off my antidepressant one time I moved to a new town could not get seen for a while I thought there were people in my selling watching me. Capcom says. Do not stop this. I've had uncontrollable crying fits unprovoked and realized it's because I stopped taking them. Honestly, I'd recommend against them, but here we are. Naywolf says. 
when I did that I'd get dizzy spells when I turned my head while moving. Super dangerous in the car. Okeel says. It's very dangerous to cold turkey these kinds of meds. Joomla00 says. Hyper arousal. At least your dick works again. R slash today I fricked up. Pinnipal Forant says. Today I fricked up didn't listen to the words that were coming out of his mouth. This is from the mid to late aughts. I had recently purchased a new device called a Kindle. I was pretty excited about it, so when my son threw it on the ground breaking the screen, I was pretty disappointed. I knew that it wasn't going to be covered by warranty, but I called Kindle support to see what they would do as far as maybe discounting a replacement. The agent I spoke with listened to my story and then asked me, so it fell from how far up. I was frustrated because I had just told him the whole story about my son throwing it and this guy didn't care enough to listen. I repeat my story and again, the guy asked how far it dropped from. This went back and forth a few times with me getting more and more frustrated at not being heard. I'm ashamed at how long it took me to realize that this guy was trying to replace the Kindle for free under warranty. It wasn't during that phone call too long, didn't read, I'm an idiot who didn't get a free Kindle. Original Fluff says. This sucks, but a good lesson in learning social cues. I'm worried what else you're missing day to day, unless he thought he was being clever, but came across simply dumb. September 27th says. I had a similar situation with a windshield replacement. The car I was driving at the time had a windshield that was a little more vertical than most and seemed to escalate the rate at which it would get little nicks and chips. It got to the point where at certain times of day, the sun hitting it at just the right angle made it pretty difficult to see and therefore pretty dangerous. There were no actual cracks though and no danger of it shattering or anything. My insurance at the time was really solid and appeared to allow for up to two free windshield replacements a year. Looking back, that seems pretty ridiculous and or unlikely, but that's my recollection. At any rate, I called my local rep and told him the situation. He put me in touch with a claims adjuster where I recounted the whole situation. He says yeah, I think we can take care of that. So he starts asking all the questions type of car, mileage, etc etc. Eventually he asks, so what date did the damage occur? I said well there's no date, it's just a bunch of nicks and pits from years of being sandblasted. He said right, but when did the damage occur? I'm like man, there's no one date. It's just gradual. He said I need you to tell me a date. Okay, just for the record I'm telling you there's no actual date, but... May 17th, or something completely random. He said okay perfect, we'll have someone out next week. Did get a few windshield replacement that day. Nationwide FTW. Serg Derp says. This is why we, humans, need to learn and practice active listening. It fell from how far up. Has an answer, just one. Not the entire story. Precise question gets precise answer gets problem solved simple. Thunder underscore GP says. It's difficult without hindsight to understand when you're disassociated with reality in the heat of the moment and not thinking slash listening straight. Knowing this line of work, it's frustrating to both parties. One side is upset and wants a resolution, the other wants to support their customers. It's often tough to interrupt the cycle of conversation. Without trying to sound rude myself, I do appreciate your recognition that you screwed up from somebody on the other side. Having somebody apologize for not listening makes a big difference. I think this is a issue with trust from brands because people have the expectation that the company is not going to help you. If anything this just outlines the lack of what is known as call control or how I describe it as who is directing the direction of the call. I would argue that the person you spoke to should have broken the cycle and been a bit more confident on the subject that they are there to help you, not just listen. Again, I mean no malice, 
but I don't see this as a foo. Hearing that you knew it was wrong would have probably make that service person happy for the day. We get beat to shit by people who do not listen, or at least comprehend what we are saying. And knowing you felt bad after, makes anybody in that line of work, feel better. We are told, to not take things personally, but in most situations it is felt that way, and we try our best. That's all for this video thank you for watching please subscribe.